Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. Few months ago, I made a video on getting started with the ESP32 MCU, and the Espressif IDE. I have decided to continue the ESP32 series, so this is basically the second video in the ESP32 series. Today we will see how to use UART in ESP32, and we will transmit and receive data from the computer using the UART peripheral. We will use a built-in example, which we will modify as per our need, I will also explain the code as we progress through the video. I have downloaded this ESP32 datasheet, and let's check the UART section in this. As mentioned here, the ESP32 has three UARTs, UART 0, 1 and 2. The communication speed can be up to 5 megabits per second. We have the hardware flow control, and DMA is also available to manage the data transfer. Today's tutorial will cover the simplest way to use UART, which is using it in the blocking mode, where we wait for the data to be received in a particular interval of time. The more complex methods like DMA, and interrupt will be covered later. You can read about the UART in detail in this section. Here you will find the UART features, the registers, the interrupts available, etc., but since we are only going to use the simple way, we will see this part in some other video. Let's start the Espressif IDE. In the meantime, let me show you the connections. I am going to use these pins, RX2 and TX2, these are basically the RX and TX pins for the UART2. As you can see, the pins RX2 and TX2 are connected to the FTDI, the USB to serial device. There must be a cross connection, connecting the RX pin from the ESP to TX of the FTDI, and the TX pin from the ESP should be connected to the RX pin of the FTDI. The UART is always connected in this way, no matter which MCU you are using. Alright let's create a new Espressif IDF project. Give some name to the project, and click next. As I mentioned we will use an example template, so check this box here. Now navigate to the peripherals, UART. We will use this particular example, as it has separate tasks for sending and receiving data. The name of the project will be set according to the example, so you need to modify it again. Click finish to generate the project. Here we have our main file. We will understand this code in detail, but first we need to build it once. Make sure the target selected is the right one, and also make sure that the COM port is correct. Now click build to build the project. The first build takes a lot of time, so I will fast forward this particular part. The build is successful without any errors. If the code still shows errors like it's showing here, just click anywhere random, and press enter. Here is the size of the RX buffer, 1024 bytes. We have to define the RX and TX pins. As I mentioned I am going to use the UART2, and as shown in the picture, the TX pin is GPIO17, and RX pin is GPIO16. Next is the initialization function. Here we have the UART configuration first. We are using the board rate of 115200, with 8 data bits, no parity check, and 1 stop bit. The hardware flow control is disabled, and the source clock for the UART is the APB clock. Now inside the initialization function, we will install the UART driver first. The first parameter is the UART instance we are using. 
As I mentioned that I am going to use the UART2 for this tutorial, I am defining it globally. And now we can simply replace it everywhere in the code. So if you are using any other UART, you just simply need to change here. Coming back to the UART driver install function, the first parameter is the UART instance, then we have the RX buffer size, which you can set according to your requirement. We are not using the TX buffer, so it is set to zero. We are not using any queue, so the event queue and UART queue are set to zero. The last parameter is the interrupt flag, which we are not using for now, so again this is set to zero. After installing the driver, we will configure the UART using the configuration we set earlier. Finally we need to configure the UART pins. This function also takes the UART instance as the first parameter, then we have the number of the TX pin, which we have defined as 17, the RX pin is defined as 16. We are not using the hardware flow control, so the CTS, and our TS pins must not be defined. We set them to UART pin no change, which is actually minus 1. So in order to initialize the UART, we need to install the driver first, then configure the parameters, and finally set the pins. Now let's take a look at the TX task. I am not planning to log the transmitted data, so let's delete these logging functions from here. Instead of sending the data using a separate function, we will call the UART write bytes inside the TX task itself. Here the parameters are the UART instance, the data, and the length of the data. The TX task will send data every 2 seconds. Next is the RX task. We will log the received data into the terminal, so first we need to define the tag. Then set the ESP log level to info. There are other log levels also, you can check them here. Then we will create a buffer to store the received data. To receive the UART data, we will call the function UART read bytes. The parameters are the UART instance, the destination buffer, the length of the data to be received, and the timeout for the data to arrive. This function waits for the specified time for the data, and if the required amount of data is received, or if the timeout occurs, the data will be stored in the RX buffer. Let me change the timeout to 500 milliseconds. The function returns the number of bytes received via the UART, which will be stored in the variable RX bytes. If we have indeed received some data, we will first set the very next position in the buffer as the terminating character. This will help the log function to identify the end of the string. Then we will log the data to the terminal using the function ESB log I, here I indicate the info. We are displaying the number of bytes received, and the data itself. We don't need to hex dump the data, so delete this function. Finally we come to the main function. Here we will first initialize the UART. Then we will create two tasks, the RX task and the TX task. The stack size for both is set to 2 kilobytes, and the priority for the RX task is set to highest, and the TX task is set to one lower than that. Once the tasks are created, the RX task will start waiting for the data to be received, while the TX task will start transmitting every two seconds. Build the project now. We need to choose a run configuration, so choose the one under ESB IDF application. 
I am using the real term serial monitor. The board rate should be 115200. The FTDI is connected to the COM port 7. The data is transmitting but I need to make a little modification. I am adding the carriage return, and the data size is 13 now. Let's test it again. Alright the data is transmitting well, and now we will open the terminal. Choose the serial monitor here, choose the project name, and the correct COM port, where the ESP is connected. Let's try to send some data to the ESP. You can see the received data has been logged into the terminal. It's due to this log function we have used. You can see we are able to transmit data every 2 seconds, and the ESP is also able to receive data accurately. Now let's modify the code, so that we would be able to send a modified data each time. I am defining an integer, which we will increment later in the code. Inside the TX task, we will first create a new buffer to store the data to be transmitted. Now we will store the data in the buffer. Here I am incrementing the value of the num variable, so that a new value is sent every time the task is executed. Let's keep this outside, and we will free the buffer in the end. There is some error about the unsigned int, so change it to character pointer. We also need to modify the data length. Alright let's build the code and run again. The ESP is sending data, and you can see the index value is updating. So the data is transmitting fine, and now we will send the data from the computer to the ESP. The data we sent, is received successfully. So we were able to send and receive data with the ESP32 and computer using the UART. I hope you understood the process and working. I begun the series with UART, because I might try to interface this ESP32 with the STM32, and UART is the easiest way to do it. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.